Hello class, this is Dr. Fenton. For chapter 7, I'm going to use the textbook as the basis for the discussion rather than the PowerPoint slides. I'm doing this because activity-based costing that's covered in chapter 7 is very detailed and I thought it'd be best to use the explanations and the examples in the chapter rather than a new set of explanations and examples in the PowerPoint slides so that when you read the chapter maybe things will be a lot more clear. Please keep in mind that with me going through the examples in this chapter and going through the chapter pages itself, don't treat this as a substitute for reading the chapter. You must read the chapter yourself for a lot more detail, a lot more background information. But I'm hoping me going through the, through the examples in the book will explain this to help you as you study the chapter. So don't just use this video and not read the chapter. You must read the chapter itself. So, let's get started. Now we can see here that this concept called activity-based costing has been embraced by a large variety of organizations. It includes Charles Schwab, Lowe's, Coca-Cola, uh, let's see, Cisco Foods, and so forth. And what this is, you know, activity-based costing is a costing method that is designed to provide managers with cost information for strategic and other decisions that potentially affect capacity and therefore fixed as well as variable cost. Now what does that mean? This means we are being more detailed in how we allocate the overhead cost. If we do it under the basis of activity-based costing, some people believe, well a lot of people believe, this gives you a better picture of exactly how much various activities in your, in your company are costing you. Here we're talking about overhead in general, not just manufacturing overhead, but any overhead in the company. Now if we scroll down a little bit, uh, let's see, let's get down to this area. This chart shows us what we have learned before in the previous chapters under you know, traditional absorption costing. We keep the manufacturing cost separate from the non-manufacturing cost. You know, these are called period cost. Is called product cost, as you can see, and we attach only manufacturing cost to the cost of the products, and then we keep the non-manufacturing costs separate, and since they are period costs, they go straight to the income statement. Now, under activity-based costing, most of it really stays the same. Our direct materials and direct labor and the direct cost still are, are attached directly to the products. Nothing changes there. In the non-manufacturing area, any direct cost, like uh, you know, shipping cost, other sales cost, you know, front office costs, as I say, if those are considered direct cost, they are still charged directly to the income statement. But here's what's different. Manufacturing overhead and non-manufacturing overhead costs in here are now going to be divided up and attached to the various activities not just products. Now we're going to see that we are attaching a lot of, the, of these overhead costs to the products, but we're also going to be talking about attaching costs to like supportive customers or things like that. So we're, we're taking these overhead costs, non-manufacturing and manufacturing, and we're going to split these out in a lot more detail and attach these to what are called activities. You know, not just products and non-product costs, but these will be activities that relate to both products and non-products. Oh, one more thing on that previous page. And let's see, this is page 311 and then 313. And now if you look in your book, uh, here we go. This is page, uh, sorry for the scrolling, page 314 in your book. <clears throat> we have these various levels of, of activities. And so it's very important to understand these as we go along. The most fundamental level is the unit level activity. This does relate to production. And so, you know, the, the more units we produce, probably, as the example shows here, the more power we consume, the more electricity or natural gas to run the machines or whatever. So these are overhead unit level cost for production. Now, batch level cost, of course, relate to units. You're, you're producing so many units in a batch. But batch cost will be uh, like the setup cost. 
you know, setting up the equipment in this example for production. So it doesn't matter if you're going to produce like a hundred units or a thousand units. To produce a certain product, you have to set up your machines in a certain way. And so these are batch level costs and you know, it can be, we're going to look at these as setup cost in a lot of examples, you know, arranging the equipment or shipments for the customers. So these are batch batches. No matter how many units in the batch, we have certain levels of activities called batch level activities. Product level activities, this is another step above that. And this relates to the products that you have, not necessarily right when you're producing them, but before or after them. So if you need to design a product, advertise for a product, or maintaining product management staff, these are product level cost. You spend this money regardless of how many batches you have of that unit or how many units that you actually produce. The next level is the consumer level activity. This gets really completely away from um, you know, most of your manufacturing cost and it takes it takes some 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 money some cost to service your customers you have sales calls you mail catalogs you, know, you email them product designs for their approval and just general technical support so these will be uh, overhead calls that really do not relate very much to production but to servicing customers finally at the very highest level in the company we have organization sustaining activities and this relates to the company overall. It can be uh, you know, factory cleaning overall. It can be um, you know, executive office cleaning, providing computer networks, arranging for loans. This is for the whole organization and not just per customer, not just per product or batch or unit. So these are five levels of activities that we can divide our overhead cost into. Now here in the uh, chapter in Exhibit 7-2, we have an example that we're going to use throughout the rest of the chapter. And this shows us a company called Classic Brass. Here's an income statement, and this should look very familiar, familiar to you. Now one thing they did in this statement was they showed us the breakdown of cost of goods sold. Usually we don't see this in an income statement. We see just the total of cost of goods sold, in this case $2,326,250. But, so we can use this in the example that continues, they are showing us that in this cost of goods sold section, we have direct materials of 975, direct labor of 351, 250. Now, as we continue with this example in the chapter, we're not going to use these two numbers here. Again, we always use this, you know, treat these the same way we did before. It's the manufacturing overhead we're going to treat differently in activity-based costing. So it shows us the breakdown of cost of goods sold. That gives us gross margin or gross profit, if you'd like to call it that. Then we have the selling administrative expenses. These should look familiar. You know, shipping cost, general administrative expenses, marketing expense. They total eight seventy-five, and so the company has a net operating loss of one million. Excuse me, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So we're losing money. So let's see if we can split this, these overhead costs out to see if we can identify. Are there certain activities where we are losing money on so that we can see what to do about those? Here are steps that we are, we're going to use to implement activity-based costing. We have to define activities, the cost pools, and activity measures, then assign the overhead cost to the cost pools, calculate the activity rates. These are sort of similar to our previous predetermined manufacturer overhead rates but not exact, but you'll, you'll see some similarity. We're going to assign the overhead cost to the cost objects and the prepare management reports. So let's go through these five steps. The first one, let's define activities, the pools, and the measures. So here we go. Now, a cost pool is an activity where we're going to accumulate cost. You can see the ones we have in this example. Customer orders, you know, that, will, that will cause uh, some cost to incur, product design, order size, customer relations, and then we have an other, if we have extra overhead, we cannot classify in these, these other cost pools. The measure, customer orders. Well, we're going to measure this in the number of orders that we take from customers during the year. Same way with design. How many designs do we 
prepared during the year for the product. Order size, that's going to relate to machine hours. So order size can be like units, and the more units that we produce, more than likely the more machine hours we're going to use. Customer relations, that cost to be divided up among the number of active customers. So again, you can read all the details here. Let's go to this page. And you can see with this uh, schedule here that we are going to split the overhead cost in these areas into a lot more detail. So this 1 million, 5, 10, and 300, I'm going to back up a page to show you where that's coming from. So look, we're looking for $1 million of production overhead, 510 in the administrative area, and marketing, 300. Let's back up. Previous page. Come down to here. Here's the 1 million. Here's the 510. Here's the 300. Those are the numbers we're going to extrapolate out and look at in more detail. And here's where we're doing that. We're saying of the $1 million of factory overhead, there are $500,000 of indirect factory wages. We are depreciating the factory equipment, $300,000, and you can see the rest. We divide up the general administrative department, 510. We have salaries, we have depreciation, and we're paying for a lease on the building. Marketing cost, we have wages and salaries and selling expenses. So again, we're, we're, we're splitting up in as much detail as we can for our company these overhead costs so that we, we can attach these to activities to see how much activities are costing us and see if we're making a profit on those activities. All right. What you've done with the help of you know, engineers and production staff and accountants and any other people need to be involved is we're saying that of the indirect factory wages that we're incurring, 25% <clears throat> of that is being incurred for customer orders. We also have 40% of the wages, indirect factory wages, related to production design. So there are people in the factory that help with production, you know, production design, because they know the equipment, they know the process and the product flow and so forth. So they're not just going to be uh, in the factory only related to actual production itself, but can be involved in design. They also be involved in deciding on order size and customer relations to some extent, and then other. Then the factory depreciation. 20% of the depreciation is related to customer orders, and we have 60% related to order size, and 20% to other. So we're, we're looking and seeing in these areas regardless of, of the dollars, we'll get to that in a minute down here, but how much of each of these areas are each of these areas spent with these activities? So we look at each one so you can see that the factory building lease has nothing to do with customer orders, nothing to do with product design, order size, or customer relations. It's all an other sort of a general overhead uh, category. We plug it in here. Do the same thing with uh, the administrative we see that some administrative salaries are related to production. You know, customer orders and product design and so forth, order size even. And you, so we'll split that up. Same thing with all these others, even the marketing department. We have, you know, none of marketing is related to actual production on the floor, but sometimes they're related to bringing a product design. Customer relations, quite a bit, that makes sense. So here, no dollars are attached. We're just looking at each of these costs and decided where are they being incurred? How much for customer orders? How much for product design, order size, customer relations, and other? After we get these percents set up, then we're going to use those percents to divide up the dollars. Here's the original $500,000 we saw in factory wages. I'm going to scroll up to show you where that's coming from. Here's the $500,000 right here. We're going to take each of these numbers and split it up according to those percentages. So let's look at the 500,000. Okay. And let me scroll down a little bit more so you can see it right there. <clears throat> so the 500,000, we're going to split 25% of this, or $125,000, is going to customer orders related to indirect factory wages. 
The 25% we calculated with the help of a lot of people. Now this is just a matter of using Excel spreadsheet. And so we take 25% of the full indirect factory wages and get $125,000. That's what, uh, sorry for the scrolling there. Uh, that's what this is showing you. So 25% times 500,000 is $125,000. Then what we'll do is take 40% of 500,000 and place 200,000 here. 20%, 500,000 gets us this number. And the rest is just easy math. Again, Excel spreadsheet will do this for you in just a couple of, couple of minutes. So each one of these you're doing the same thing. Uh, let's look at it, an easy example. The factory building lease, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so no dollars are attached to customer orders, product design, order size, or customer relations for the building lease. It all goes in this other category. So the full $80,000 goes here because that's what we decided up here with the percents. So do the same thing with each of these. And this and then we do this. This is the next step. Customer orders now. We take the total cost we have in customer orders. Let me scroll up this other page right here. $320,000. That's where that number comes from. So now we're taking each of these cost numbers. Each of these. And we're going to divide those by our measures that we had earlier. So $320,000 that we're spending on customer orders. And we have a, a thousand orders during the year that's costing us $320 per order. Product design, 252. If we have 400 designs during the year, each design is then costing us $630. Customer relations, let's jump down to there, 367.5. We have 250 active customers. So each customer is costing us 1470 and then that final category, the 490, and I got, let me scroll up and show you where that's coming from. Here's the 490, 500. We don't have a measure. We'll see how to handle that in, in the future. So what we've done is taken the overhead cost, manufacturing and non-manufacturing, and we're attaching these to all the different activities. Direct materials, direct labor, go straight to the product. Shipping cost, go straight as, a, as a, a period cost, straight to the income statement. Here's what we're doing, dividing up all the overhead costs, again, related to manufacturing and non-manufacturing, to try to be more detailed, more specific in, in exactly what activities are costing us. Now, the next step is to assign overhead cost to cost objects. So this is the, the it's fourth step, step four in the process we talked, we looked at earlier, but this is also called at this fourth step, the second stage allocation. So don't get steps and stages confused. So we're in the fourth step of the activity-based costing procedure, and this is the second stage allocation. What we need to do here is allocate the cost to cost objects. Here, our cost objects are two different products standard sanctions and custom uh, compass housings. Okay, So in the standard sanctions we have uh, this product does not require any new product design resources. We had 30,000 units were ordered during the year and they were part of 600 separate orders. So these orders have more than one unit being ordered. So we have 600 orders, 30,000 units being made, and each stanchion requires 35 minutes of machine time for a total of 17,500 machine hours for the whole year. Custom compass housings, we have, uh, these do require new product designs. These are, I guess, sort of like special order kind of items. There were 400 orders, and then um, they were placed separately. We had 400 custom designs, because every time we have an order, we have a special design for that order. And then, once we have an order, there were you know, more than one unit per order, so we have 1,250 custom compass housings, in other words, units produced um, in this, for this product. 
They require two machine hours each for a total of 2,500 machine hours. All right, so let's take this information and find out how much needs to be applied to each of these different kinds of products. Remember, we just computed these numbers a minute ago. Let me scroll up and show you right here. So let's take these numbers and apply these based on their measure to the two different products. So in this first one, there were 600 orders and we apply $320 uh, overhead cost per order, so $192,000. This product did not require any designs, so we apply no design cost to this, to this product. These require $19 uh, is the amount per machine hour. We use 17,500 machine hours in total, so 332.5. So of the overhead, the manufacturing and the non-manufacturing overhead, we apply $524,500 to this product. The second product, we had 400 orders. Here's the cost per order, $128,000. This one does require design time, you know, design. So we said these cost $630 per each design, 400 designs, one per order. So 252 is the total. Order size uh, depends on units, and then they start using machine hours. So we calculated earlier $19 per machine hour, and we're going to use 2,500 machine hours. So $47,500 total here for a total of $427,500 of overhead cost for this product. You can see now how detailed all these numbers are. We keep you going layer by layer. We're, found, we're finding you know, measures, cost pool. We're doing allocations, so it's very detailed. Next, let's prepare a schedule just to see where things stand at this point. And again, we're just looking at overhead cost here. So the standard sections, we have uh, the cost we just computed here and here. Let me show you. Here they are, 524 and 427.5. Same numbers. Bring it across for the total. And customer relations is still overhead cost we have not applied anywhere yet. And here's the other overhead cost. And so we've accounted in this schedule for the total overhead we're trying to allocate of $1,810,000. Now I want to show you where this number came from. So let's back up. Again, sorry for the scrolling, but want to go back up here. Here we are, 1,810,000. So we've been allocating a lot of these numbers. Uh, some we have not allocated yet. We'll get to that in a minute. But you know, 1,810,000 is where we are in this schedule right here. So let's stop for a second and look at a customer. One of our customers is Windward Yachts. And for this customer, uh, they placed uh, three orders. Two were for the were for 150 standard stanchions, and so one for the custom compass housing unit. So three orders, two separate products, and they used um, 177 total machine hours, 175 for the first product, and then only two hours for the second product. And this is only one customer of 250 total customers that Classic Brass has. So let's allocate these costs to Windward Yachts. Here we go. For Windward, and again, this is being very specific. Now we're allocating costs to a customer. So this customer gave us three orders during the year. 320 per order is our cost we calculated. So we're going to allocate 960 to this customer, one design, 360, and 177 machine hours that totals uh, 3363. Uh, they are one customer, and so we have $1,470 per customer is the allocation cost. So I want to show you again where the 1470 came from. We haven't seen that in a few minutes. Let's go back up. Um, right here. You know, here were the total cost allocated to customers, 250 customers. So each customer gets overhead applied to that customer of 1,470. Come back down. 
Here we are. So of the overhead cost, we're going to allocate $6,423 to Windward Yachts. And now for a, another report. They're showing us this because this has nothing to do with all the allocation we just, we just performed. These are the sales for different products in total. These are the direct materials, direct labor, and the direct shipping cost for each product for the total. Now let's put it all together. Let's take this and drop it into the first part of this schedule coming up at the bottom here. So you see all these numbers from two, uh, 2,660 down to 60. Here it is, 2,660, or really 2,660, down to this $60,000. And now the 192 and the 332 come from right here, 192, 332. And these numbers are being dropped in, well, I went past it, uh, right in here. So take you know, these beginning direct numbers, the sales and direct, throw in the allocation base for the overhead, the indirect, and here this is. What this chart is showing us, you know, this, this is where we're finally getting to what all this means, is that for this product, the standard sanctions, it is giving us a product margin of a positive $906,250. Very profitable. This is showing us, after all this allocation, we are losing money on the custom cousin, uh, compass, <laughs> excuse me, the custom compass housings. Okay. <clears throat> and so we're losing $49,500 on this product. So this gives us detail per product on are we profitable or not for that product. You don't see this information in the typical cost accounting system. It's all sort of thrown together. You might have an overall profit. I think the company overall had a loss of 1,000 some odd dollars. Well, we don't know exactly why we're having that final result. Since we have at least two different products, we can see here when we use activity-based costing, we can find more detail. So again, here's the overall, yeah, here's the net operating loss. Here's what we've done so far, positive, negative, same numbers from here to here, here to here. Overall profitable, but the standard absorption cost system doesn't show us the breakdown between products. Throw in the other costs we've not, not allocated yet, and here's the overall net, pro, uh, net loss for the company. Okay, so this shows what's happened for the firm overall. Break it down per products and still have it for the firm in general. And even though at the very beginning we knew we had a 1,250 loss, now we know it's this second product that is causing the loss. Not the first one, the second one. So this gives you an incentive to figure out what can we do to make this product profitable? Or should we continue it? You know, so that's, that's the decision. Now let's look at Windward Yachts. Let's prepare a little schedule just for this customer. Uh, here were the total sales of this customer, and we, we have the direct materials, direct labor, and direct shipping cost. Drop those numbers down to here. We've already calculated these earlier. Let me show you this again. Remember the 960 down to 1470 came right here, 960 to 1470. Overhead cost allocated to just this one customer only. Come back down to the chart. Now we can see that with all the cost allocated to this customer, cost allocated in much more detail, especially the overhead cost, we are making a profit on this customer. This customer gives us a margin of $699. So this process, you know, acti activity-based costing, allows you to not only look at products, is a product making you a profit or not, but customers. So if you have a customer who's causing you to lose a lot of money, you need to make the decision, should you continue with that customer or not. So again, a lot more detail in, uh, in this activity-based costing system. Let's see, we're comparing this to the traditional approach. Um, here we go. If you look at the traditional approach where we don't allocate overhead 
in the detail we do in ABC. So this is back to the tra traditional cost system. It looks like both products are profitable. But going through the process of being more involved in allocating cost and being as accurate as we can, we just saw, even with these results under the traditional cost system, we just saw that in reality, we are probably losing money on the custom uh, Compass Housings product. Go back one page. So looking at this in the activity-based based costing numbers, we see that we are probably losing money on the second product. And again, a lot more profitable on the first product. And we don't see that in the traditional costing numbers. It looks like we have profit on both. Let's see what else is on this page. Um, here are the differences we saw a minute ago. Traditional uh, costing system looks like profits on both. ABC, we're probably making a lot more profit on the first one and losing money on the second one. So you, here are the differences. Okay, so maybe you're making bad decisions when you're just looking at the traditional costing system. Let's see, that's about it, I guess. Um, next page. And again, just sort of a follow-up page here uh, towards the last of the chapter because the next gets into the um, external reports. You cannot use ABC costing for external reporting purposes. Um, it's very useful within the company, but um, we don't give this much detail in the external reports. So we do fall back to the traditional costing system for external reports. They talk about limitations. You can read that on your own. And gets into the summary. Now, again, going through this video and the chapter pages, this is not a substitute for reading the chapter yourself. I hope it helped a lot, but go back and reread the chapter if you haven't done that yet. You'll get a lot more detail behind the scenes. I just covered the the, the basics, and here we are you know, around 30 minutes into the video. But th this is not a substitute for not reading the chapter, so please read the chapter uh, yourself. Okay? All right, so I know a lot of detail in this chapter, so... Uh, study hard and good luck with the material.